Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we will be reviewing the Ivan Gutierrez Wash Process Costa Rica from Ilse Coffee. And there's a bag right there. And Ilse, based out of Stamford, Connecticut, and they're a coffee roaster we featured on this channel just a couple of days ago, and this was the coffee that was suggested to us by our good friend and longtime subscriber Howard. So shout out to and thank you to Howard for the suggestion. He did reach out to us directly and specifically recommended this coffee. And uh, Howard knows us pretty well, he knows our coffee preferences, but we usually do our best to accommodate it anytime anybody has a specific coffee recommendation for us. So we definitely wanted to review this coffee, but before we start discussing it, we still have those kind of pesky notes to get out of the way. It's currently December 7th, we still have not received our advent calendar, so truth be told, I actually wanted to release this coffee review after the advent calendar for a number of reasons. There are about three cups of coffee still left in this bag, and I want to keep working on this bag of coffee because it's been a pretty interesting cup of coffee for a number of reasons. We'll get into a lot of that a little later in this video, but as a result, uh, yeah, hopefully this video will never see the light of day, and hopefully we'll get our advent calendar today and we can start those reviews as soon as tomorrow. So we'll work with what we have. This right here is day 21 of this coffee. And recipe we went with was the same for this one as well. It's a 16 to one water to coffee ratio. Brewed at 208 degrees Fahrenheit. And one of the reasons I still wanna keep working with this coffee is I still wanna determine whether or not I like it better with the Chemex or the V60. But for this video, we'll go with Chemex. It was brewed with the Chemex, tasting wheel made with the Chemex and with a medium grind. And they're definitely on the lighter side of that light medium American for the roast profile. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. The six, first time trying it, and it was kind of interesting. This is a Gesha, for anybody that doesn't know, and it had a kind of muted first impression, which in hindsight is pretty hilarious, but that's kind of what I could think. It was uh, just essentially pretty light, and I couldn't figure out necessarily why, or if there was anything specifically wrong with this coffee early on. I was probably thinking, you know what, it's probably just too early in this coffee, and uh, was just getting some very light citrus, lemon water is probably the best descriptor I have. Overall, it wasn't bad by any means, it was just kind of underwhelming. And that's why it's funny, because on day eight, it immediately exploded into a similar profile to the other LC coffee we had had, which was a ridiculously lively, vibrant floral. And again, it was that honeysuckle. And this time, at least, they have the honeysuckle flavor note listed on here. But I do find it funny that both of them had a very strong and distinct uh, honeysuckle flavor to them. I do like that flavor for whatever it's worth, but it was intense. One of the most intensely floral cups of coffee I'd ever experienced. I was probably on that point at that moment. I had experienced the strongest honeysuckle components to any cup I'd ever experienced. Soft fruits present in the background, but very much a secondary characteristic. I was going to see how those might develop over time. A11 up to the temperature and thought it was better too. It was uh, much sweeter as well, a little crisp overall. Most to think distinct things still remained a very, very sweet honeysuckle. I mean, very strong. Uh, pretty intense, softer citrus as well, which I know is kind of counterintuitive, but yeah, it was uh, pretty, pretty noticeable there. Day 13 coffee, definitely better at the higher temperatures. So going back, trying it at the higher temperatures again, I really like it better that way. Heavy florals uh, seem to be a bit better balanced with the softer fruits, which were making a little bit more pronounced presence at this time. Finishes into a robust citrus still. Definitely had this kind of lingering finishing citrus to the cup. Day 15 persisted with the coffee at the higher temperatures, and it was a pretty interesting day on day 15 as the coffee has a very similar sweetness to the Mario Moreno from Passenger, which was one of our favorite coffees earlier this year, and it's going to be that uh, kind of mango sweetness. And they have listed on here ripe mango. Yeah, okay, that's in abundance. And from day 15 forward, that was almost as strong, if not even more pronounced than that honeysuckle flavor to it. Sugary, sweet, tropical fruit, most distinctly that mango. Strong bit of uh, honey and caramel in this cup as well, so there is a lot. That was the best day of the coffee to that point. And we've seen improvement in the coffee. It's day 17, the coffee has taken another distinct shift. The super strong and abundant florals are now somewhat the secondary characteristics to a much more fruity cup, which is kind of fun. A lot more stone fruits and uh, quite a bit of citrus in this cup now at this time. Day 19, weirdly enough, the honeysuckle has definitely taken a backseat to a very, very strong uh, fruit sweetness. And there is a strong and similar sweetness again to that Mario Moreno. I think at this time I would even call it kind of like a fruity creamsicle. It's just interesting. The citric component I would most closely align this with. For me, it's a little bit of that unripened pineapple. I think I'm experiencing that quite a bit today as well. All right, let's go ahead and put up this tasting wheel so you can see what we were getting. And we made this tasting wheel just before this video because as mentioned, we weren't necessarily planning on putting out this video this early, but uh, kind of forced to. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that tasting wheel. So we have uh, four things at a level four this time, and correction, at a level five this time. And what's really funny is the top of this tasting wheel looks exactly the same as it did with our last Ilse coffee as the cleanliness level four, finish, sweet, acidity, florals, 
uh, even the spice and body. They are all the exact same as they were on the other LC coffee, which is hilarious. But yeah, we mentioned that the honeysuckle in this cup is just as lively. I think it was a little bit more lively towards the end with that other coffee, but definitely towards the beginning, it was much more lively in this cup of coffee. So I think it still justifies that level five. Very sweet coffee. And just like with the other one, it has a very lasting finish. I'm still very much tasting this coffee after I've drank it uh, moments ago. I'm continue tasting this coffee for a while. And then the stone fruit I put at a level five. But let's discuss those fruits because the fruits are kind of important. The citrus fruit is very pronounced and I think it was most consistently present throughout the time drinking this coffee. Even from day six when we weren't getting too much, we were still getting quite a fair bit of citrus. So I think it's perfect at that level four in the sense that it was never the most dominant characteristic, but it was always present. And then the berry fruit at level three, because they do have listed on here a melon note and it's definitely there, but it's by far the most soft and uh, background component in this cup of coffee, as the stone fruit can definitely dominate. I mean, the mango is really lively, especially on this day. So I think that that justifies that level five. And I think the rest are kind of relative to how strong both the florals as well as the uh, stone fruit is, because I think even at times you might be able to bump up both of them, berry fruit level four, as well as the citrus fruit level five. But I think just for purposes of the tasting wheel, I think that's the best way it could kind of look this way. Uh, caramel level three, I mentioned that there's some really nice caramel in this cup as well from time to time. A slight bit of bitterness and savoriness, but not too much else worth noting. Uh, the only things we have at a level one are the smokiness and the chocolate. And we kind of mentioned that the other one had a more smoky honeysuckle. This one's definitely a more clean honeysuckle, so that's definitely worth noting on there. And the smokiness could be bumped all the way up to a level two, but I don't think it's justified there. So I think it's best at a level one. All right, overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee, and I've been very much looking forward to discussing this. Um, I wish that I had an opportunity to keep working with this coffee, and hopefully this video is never released, and I can continue to work with this coffee because I'm curious to see what else I might be able to get from it. This has been a very wild, out there, different cup of coffee than I was necessarily expecting, and I had a friend recently tell me that uh, geishas were overhyped, and this is exactly why I love geishas, because they're not as one-dimensional, I think, as some people might assume. For example, the Lady Bermudas is technically a geisha, as well as uh, the, say, Panama Gesha that we reviewed earlier this year, two wildly different coffees, but both had such a unique and awesome profile to them that you wouldn't be able to tell that they were two similar coffees. It's kind of the same thing with this. I've never had a Gesha that really tastes like this. This one's so unique and out there on its own, different. And one of the best compliments you can ever give someone or something for anything that they do is to say it's interesting. This isn't gonna be my favorite coffee of the year. I did enjoy this coffee, but uh, much more, you know, much better than saying, this is a good cup of coffee. This is an interesting cup, cup of coffee. This one caught my attention, and that's why I wanted to keep working with this coffee to just see what else we might be able to pull from this coffee, as it's been just so out there and wild. And that's been the case with both of the Ilse coffees that we've reviewed. They've been much more wild and out there than I think I was expecting. I didn't really know what to expect from Ilse, but they caught my attention. I do want to try more coffees from them in the future. I'm curious to see why they had this kind of similar profile and why they both acted and structured in the same sort of way as it's just different and it's kind of fun. So they've kind of renewed this fun spark with a lot of coffees for me. The type of person I would suggest this coffee to is somebody that does enjoy, uh, oof, I don't even know. Again, the strong florals. A strong stone fruit, uh, let this coffee sit a little bit and you'll be getting those. Some very strong sweetness, as well as a very lasting cup of coffee. Again, an intense version of a washed coffee. As oftentimes, I don't think people can understand how strong washed coffees can be. This one's a super intense washed coffee as well. And yeah, I don't know if I can really do justice to just how out there this cup of coffee was, but hopefully this will suffice. And I think for the most part, I'll just leave this review at that. If you by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee, we'd love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the Ivan Gutierrez Wash Process Costa Rica from LC Coffee. Thank you for watching.